Well, hello there, everyone out in the world. Uh, hi, welcome to a new B Movie Mania video thing we're doing. Uh, with me is, well, I'm I am Michael Hayes. It's good to start with that, right, Jay? <laughs> it's very important. Okay, so I'm Michael Hayes, and with me is another member of the B Movie Mania podcast, Jason Hulse. <laughs> hi, hi, Jay. Um, hi, do you know what we're doing here today? I have no idea. You called me on this video chat, and now I'm seeing a box with Friday the 13th Universe and a bunch of letters. What mm -hmm. is this? Mm -hmm. This is a tier list, which is something that all the cool people have been doing on YouTube and other places for a long time. And so I thought, why don't we try to, to tier list stuff that we like? Um, okay. So... It's nothing new in terms of the viewers. They they clicked on this because it said tier list, probably. I think I don't know what TikTok is. Are we on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so here's what this is. Uh, what we have is a tier list, which goes from different levels and ranks or tiers, uh, from S to A, B, C, D, E, and then F at the bottom. And and what this allows us to do is we can rank various things. Uh, in ways that it doesn't have to be linear. There doesn't have to be a number one. There's just a number one level. So stuff that you think is the best, there can be multiple of them. And so that's okay. kind of the idea. And stuff that's the worst, they can have a bunch of that too. So it doesn't have to all be, you know, one, two, three, four. It's different groupings of quality and enjoyment uh, for these these movies. Because obviously we're doing Friday the 13th Universe. We're going to do all the movies from Friday the 13th. I'm into it. Can, Let's go. All right, we're going to do it. Well, uh, first up, Jay, is movie number one, 1980, Friday the 13th. It started it all. Uh, the basic premise of this, and by the way, just because it's polite, there will be spoilers. I'm going to say all the stuff about the movies in this. So Has to be. If, Has to yeah. Be. If, you, if you haven't missed one, if you haven't watched it, that, you, nothing, it's fine. Anyway, Why are you watching this thing? The 1980 film uh, is, involves... If, for your uh, a little reminder here, Mrs. Pamela Voorhees stalks and murders the teenagers preparing Camp Crystal Lake for reopening. She's determined to ensure the camp does not reopen after her son Jason drowned in the lake. And due to the negligence of two staff members, well, that's why he died. Uh, so the last counselor is Alice Hardy, and she fends off Mrs. Voorhees long enough to grab a machete and decapitate her. Classic film. Mm -hmm. Jay, so here's what we got to do. Here's what I need from you. I need you to think okay. about this movie, and you need to tell me where on the general this general list here, where you think it goes in terms of quality or enjoyment or whatever. Where do you put it? What tier do you put Friday the 13th, the original? I can just – I know that this could just generate a bunch of hate comments. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, this whole concept – because people are not going to oh, agree we're, with me. You know, sure. Oh, let's, let's put that out here real quick. Uh, if you have a, a differing opinion and, and, and want to express that, please comment uh, below on the video. Uh, if you're mad about it, though, uh, comment on the new Justin Bieber music video thread, please, and let them know that why you're fun. mad about what Jay says. Yeah, that's a way better place to put yeah. your comments, okay? Uh, so Friday the 13th. Obviously, it's the thing that started it all, right? It's the classic, but I'm looking at this as uh, overall, you know, franchise enjoyment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mama Voorhees is awesome in this. You know, it's a nice surprise at the end, obviously, when Jason does pop out of the water. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's classic. It's an iconic scene. Uh, but it's not my favorite of the series, so sure. I'm going to give it a B. A B? B tier. Mm -hmm. All right, B -tier. so now I get to do this, and this is really cool, right? Look how fancy this is. That's very nice. And there. It's right there. That's just okay. how this works. Technology is so amazing. <laughs> this is easy. I can do this. Yeah. Boom. Next movie, yeah. 1981. They do part two. Um to remind you, Jason is revealed to be alive and fully grown. After killing Alice Hardy, Jason returns to Crystal Lake to guard it from all intruders. Five years later, a group of teenagers arrive at Crystal Lake to set up a new camp, but Jason murders them. 
Uh, Jenny Field, the last counselor Jason attempts to kill, finds a cabin in the woods with a shrine built around the severed head of Mrs. Voorhees. Uh, Jenny fights back and slams a machete through Jason's shoulder. Jason is left for dead as Jenny is taken away in an ambulance. Yeah, okay. So if I was going to tell somebody, like, you can only watch one of these uh-huh. movies, this one would be it. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, I love the, you know, Mama Voorhees shrine head thing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, okay, if I, I wish Jason had the mask. I'm I'm more of a fan of zombie Jason mm-hmm. than not zombie Jason. But, okay. so, I, I mean, I, I kind of wish I could put all of my favorite elements of the movies in one movie. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I saw, yeah, I wish he had the hockey mask and I wish he was zombie Jason in this one. But he's not. However, I think this movie is awesome. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I love that the fact that you get to go see a, a little bit more of Jason and like where he lives and mm-hmm. the whole part, even though I don't think it makes a tremendous amount of sense in the context of the movie. I love the part when she tricks Jason into calming down a little bit by impersonating Mama Voorhees. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. I'm going S. S tier. Top tier here. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. let's get it in there. I got to just shrink it up. And boom, top tier. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to get over how simple it is to do this. It's great. <laughs> We're having fun. All right. Part three. They're really imaginative so far in the beginning of these films, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The titles are part one, part two, part three. Um, okay. So the plot of this film, part three, is Jason removes the machete from his soldier, his shoulder, and finds his way to Chris Higgins' local homestead. Chris returns to her property with some friends and Jason kills anyone who wanders into the barn where he is hiding. Taking a hockey mask from a victim to hide his face, Jason leaves the barn to kill the rest of the group. Chris seemingly kills Jason with an axe to the head, but the night's events drive her into hysteria as the police take her away. Yeah. Love this one too. Uh, It's the one where he gets the iconic hockey mask. You know, Mm -hmm. you gotta love that. So, I'm going to put this one in the A tier. A tier? All right. Mm -hmm. Let's pop that into there. And we've got some cool sound effects. That's the budget. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Up next, very predictably, Friday the 13th 4, the final chapter. Yes, um, the absolute last movie in the franchise, right? Yep, it's the final one in 1984. Mm-hmm. They cut the franchise. They said, we're done with it. Um, but this one does continue where part three leaves off with Jason found by the police and taken to the local morgue after removing the axe. Upon arrival, Jason awakens to kill the coroner and a nurse before returning to Crystal Lake. A group of friends rent a house on Crystal Lake and fall victim to Jason's rampage. After killing the teens, Jason seeks out Trish and Tommy Jarvis, played by Mr. Corey Feldman, Uh, who Mm -hmm. live next door. While distracted by Trish, Jason is attacked and ultimately killed by Tommy. Yeah, look. I mean, it's got young Feldog. Mm -hmm. That's got to account for something. Young Feldog. You know, I believe that this one was trying to set up uh, some sort of weird little connection between Tommy Jarvis, boy Tommy Jarvis, and and Jason. Mm -hmm. You know, with that weird ending and him cutting all of his hair off and everything. Uh, I'm yeah, into yeah. it. I had fun with it. I'm going to give mm-hmm. it the B tier. B tier. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll just pop that. Same as the first here. movie. Yeah. You know, it, it, they, I'm sure we're going to have a whole variety of things that pop in and out of this. Oh, I'm yeah. Just gonna... And let me tell you, the, those bottom tiers are going to get filled up, I'm sure. Oh, are they? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. You can leave them alone. You don't have to. You can put everything in S tier if you want, Jay. Well, I don't love everything. Okay. All right. Well, then it's time to see what you feel about. Boom. Friday the 13th, part five, a new beginning. Uh, Jay, <laughs> this one follows Tommy Jarvis, now portrayed by John Shepard, uh, who was committed to a mental health institution after the events of the final chapter and grew up constantly afraid of Jason. Um, Joy, uh, Roy Burns uses Jason's persona to become a copycat killer at the half, at the halfway home to which Jarvis, Jesus, Jarvis has moved. Um, Tommy, uh, supervisor Pam and a young boy named Reggie managed to defeat Roy. 
Uh, they eventually learn that Roy had a son who was murdered by one of the patients at the institution, triggering Roy to take on Jason's likeness and kill everyone there. A real departure. It is, you know, and I remember watching this one for the first time and not like totally hating it. This, I feel like this one gets beat up a lot Mm -hmm. and just because there's no Jason, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even, if I remember correctly, there's not even Jason's theme in it. There might be at the very end. Really? But I don't think there's any of the, that stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think that exists in this one because Jason's not properly in it. Um, so it there is some suspense, and if you're into the violence, there's plenty of that. Um, but you know, you just don't have Jason Voorhees, and so I'm putting this in the E tier. E tier. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's not. I mean, you know, there's worse things to watch, but if you're you got the hockey mask on the front, man. Like, yeah. don't give me a copycat. You think it's? You think they were trying to do some sort of soft reboot or something? Like, we've done the thing. We're going to try to do a new thing where we can make the killers Ed be anyone. I and... kind of feel like they were trying to test the waters going in a different way. Like, what if it was, you know, yeah. Like, what if it was just somebody else? It wasn't Jason, but it's, you know, like Jason. And does that have mm-hmm. the same effect? No, it doesn't. I'm yeah. sorry. Well. Huh. That's fair. Well, let's see here. Jason uh, lives here on Friday the 13th, part six. Um, Mm -hmm. This one begins with Tommy visiting Jason's grave after being released from another mental institution. Uh, Tommy inadvertently resurrects Jason with a piece of fence surrounding the cemetery, acting as a lightning rod. Jason immediately heads back to Crystal Lake and kills the people working at the new summer camp. Tommy eventually chains Jason to a boulder that he tosses into the lake where he leaves Jason, who is revealed to be alive. Yeah. Okay. So I'm into this one. I'm into this because here's the thing. Like I like Tommy Jarvis as a character. I like Mm -hmm. the fact that they tried to give Jason a nemesis that went throughout several films from Mm -hmm. boy, Tommy to adult Tommy. I like that. It's just that five was a bit of a stumble, you know? Yeah. Um, so I like that. I I am a fan of zombie Jason, and this is where that whole thing really kicks off. I mean, there's okay. no question now he's being resurrected by lightning bolts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, so I like that. So I'm putting this one in the A tier. I A? think this right. is fun. I enjoy this one. All right. And I enjoy the the good-natured rivalry between Jason and Tommy Jarvis. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I shrank that up a little bit there. I had to fix one of the older ones. Uh, Filling it in. (laughs) All right. Well, that obviously leaves us to part seven, The New Blood. Uh, This is the one that begins an indeterminate length of time after Jason lives. Uh, Jason, (laughs) who is now played by Kane Hodder, uh, is resurrected again by the telekinetic Tina Shepard, who is trying to resurrect her father, whom Tina caused to drown in the lake when she was a child. Jason once again kills those who occupy Crystal Lake and is returned to the bottom of the lake after a battle with Tina. You you have you're covering your face. What is this? <laughs> this the is, telekinetic this... Tina. Uh huh. Battling Jason Voorhees, and now you have to give room for telekinesis and psychics if you're going to give room for a immortal killer. I mean, I guess mm-hmm. just the way it's done and. I mean, did you see the ending? Did you see uh, Dad popping out of the lake? No, I haven't seen this one. Dad pops out like Mama Voorhees pops out? Uh, sort of. Huh. And I, I'd have to go back and watch it again. But I think when Dad pops out of the lake, I'm pretty sure he's dry. <laughs> All right. So, well, maybe no. he's impervious to wetness. <laughs> I suppose uh, there could be a fan film to uh, investigate that. <laughs> I will not be watching it. I'm giving part seven an F. An F? Wow. Bottom of the barrel part seven here. Yes. Yes. Don't watch this one if you're going to watch it Friday the 13th movie. All right. We're going to avoid part seven. Thankfully, there's plenty of movies to watch other than it. So 
Mm-hmm. You do that. Much like part eight, Jason takes Manhattan. <laughs> um, a movie where Kermit isn't in it. And uh, <laughs> Jason is resurrected again by an underwater electrical cable. <laughs> of course, he follows a group of students on their senior class cruise to Manhattan, where he kills the ship's crew and the majority of the students. Upon reaching Manhattan, Jason chases Rennie and Sean, the two remaining students, into the sewers. Jason eventually melts away because the sewer is flooded with toxic waste. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I mean, it's a cool poster. It's a beautiful poster. It's a cool concept. I remember when I was a young man seeing many advertisements for this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, it just... uh, No. The... the, to me, this movie is possibly the biggest missed opportunity of the entire franchise. Wow. You put Jason in Manhattan. He should be going hog wild. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. just don't feel like he does nearly to the extent that he should have. Doesn't he just um, show up at Manhattan? Like, he's not in Manhattan very long at all. No, he's not at all. He the, Most of it's on the boat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, they get to Manhattan. But then he wanders around in the dark alleys you know, most of the time, it's just not very satisfying. I don't feel like it delivers on the premise Mm, very well. Yeah. So I'm also going to tank this one with an F. Oh man. All right. All right. You weren't kidding. We're getting some use Mm -hmm. out of these. Yeah. All right. There's our F tier for you. All right. Well, let's see if this next one can help. We just recently watched this for the podcast. (laughs) So I have absolutely Mm -hmm. seen this one for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jason goes to hell the final Friday. It's the first one that doesn't have a Friday the 13th title on it. Um, but this is the one where Jason through an unexplained resurrection, which probably is electrical cables. I assume, uh, is, <laughs> <laughs> is hunted by the FBI at crystal Lake. The FBI sets up a string that successfully kills Jason, um, through possession. Jason manages to survive by passing his black heart from one being to the next. <laughs> So that's what he's throwing up in the movie is his heart. Uh, It is revealed that he has a sister and a niece and that he needs them to get his body back. Jason resurrects himself, but his niece, Jessica Kimball, stabs him with a mystical dagger and he is dragged into hell. Look, if you have laid out some of this mythology in part three, Mm -hmm. part four. I might be with you. Okay. Okay. But you can't just come into the franchise at part nine and and try to lay this whole layer of mythology on us that doesn't have any re- bearing history or relevance to anything that came before it. Uh-huh. It just doesn't work. It's not a Friday. It, it, even the title. It's not a Friday the 13th movie. Yeah. It's not a Jason Voorhees movie. He shaves a man. He does. It, that said, I do... There is, for me, personally, I have fond memories of this film because Chris got out of Army mm-hmm. after three mm-hmm. years of not seeing him. We watched this movie the night he got back for some reason <laughs> that we still don't know. So I do have a little bit of fond memories for this. So I'm going to give it a very loving... D. Okay. It's not great. No. But for but... me, there's a there's a special spot for me. So just just like if there's a D plus, I'll give it that. I'm going D. Here, I'll do I'll do I'll put it like kind of like this on the screen. Okay. There. That's, give it that's a little, fair. It's kind of popping up there. I feel that that's accurate. All right. Well, now it's time <laughs> to get serious. We're going to space, <laughs> motherfucker. Jason okay. X takes place in the future when Jason has again been inexplicably resurrected. <laughs> a scientist, Rowan, decides that chronic, uh, cryonic, cryonic suspension is the only method of stopping him. But Jason breaks free and kills the army personnel guarding him before he can again... Im- Jesus, Mike. Before he can you again can be imprisoned. Rowan manages to lure Jason into the cryo chamber, but he ruptures the tank and freezes both himself and Rowan. Over 400 years later, a team of... <laughs> That's just the prelude of the film. That well, much. Yeah. Um, 
Over 400 years later, a team of students studying Earth discover Jason's body and take it into space. Upon being thawed by the team, he proceeds to murder everyone aboard the spacecraft. He's seemingly killed, but in the, but is then resurrected via nanotechnology as a cyborg version of himself. Finally, he's ejected into space and incinerated by Earth 2's atmosphere, his mask falling to the bottom of a lake. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I watched this one again only maybe two weeks ago. Okay. And so this one is the most fresh in my mind out of all of mm-hmm. these. And dude, I mean, it just swings for the fence. Yeah. I mean, okay. So part nine was like, we want to do something different with the franchise. Mm-hmm. This one comes along and is like, no, nah, we'll do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're taking him to space <laughs> 400 years in the future. Are you uh, like, and I, I did research on this movie, too. There's evidently a whole comic book line where Jason survives that descent to yeah. Earth 2. And there's something that happens where I don't I, I'd have to look it up again. But it's like the original Jason and and, and space Jason, nano Jason mm-hmm. yeah. end up meeting and fighting. And okay. there's this whole space warfare thing that happens Mm -hmm. led by the jasons it's what nuts it is nuts oh man i need Um, that yeah maybe we'll have to do that for a book report we'll do that for the movie book report we'll read that comic series um yeah nuts um so i at least okay so i should say that's what i read so i hope that Mm -hmm. comic actually exists because i have not read it myself if not we're gonna make it yes (laughs) um so Okay, so it's it's a fun movie. Mm-hmm. In the grand scheme of Friday the 13th movies, if you don't want to just turn somebody on and say watch Jason X first because that will just wreck them for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Um so I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to give it a C. Okay. I enjoyed it. I like it. But it is so different than anything else. Yeah. So That's some fair. people hate it. I actually did enjoy it, and I wish other movies would, other tired franchises would would get as crazy as this tried to do with Friday the Thirteenth. Because why not? I I I would say that like the Fast franchise has kind of done that. Like they literally, they took yeah. they this movie inspired Fast Nine. Jason X is inspired Fast Nine, absolutely, hundred percent. Not no joke. I'm not going to say in what ways if someone hasn't seen it because Fast Nine I is fairly have recent. Not, and but I, I know think they he, get crazier. It Fast Nine. There are literal things that this movie did that the filmmaker did intentionally. That this movie did. Wow. I'm just saying. I'm just going to say that it's absolutely. Okay. There's no way uh, the director wasn't inspired by this, or the writer, whoever. <laughs> Well, okay, so we did all ten, right? Well, there's a couple more actually. Jay, we got but Freddy I've only versus about Jason. These. Yo, oh, we're gonna talk about these. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do everything here. Okay, Freddy mm-hmm. versus Jason. I saw it in the theater. Um, my initial reaction to it was not very positive. Okay. Um. I've, everybody loves the concept, but I just remember thinking like, nah, I just, the execution of it wasn't mm-hmm. great. However, after seeing all the Friday the 13th, because I had not seen the whole Friday the 13th franchise, oh. I only saw like, I don't even know what I saw before I went and saw F- Freddy versus Jason. It completely out of order, not should, should not be done that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mistake on my part. And I feel like if I watched it again now, I would like it more. Okay. Um, hmm. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a C also. Okay. I would, I'm going to put it in that far out category with Jason X. It's a fun, you think it's probably more fun than you remember, but yeah. it's, it's a, it's another kind of a wild swing of a movie, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I do remember like I like the setup. I like the fact that Freddy uses Jason 
um, and that whole thing. So mm-hmm. it's probably worth another watch. Yeah, I've not seen it, but I was reading the plot for it, and like, it sounds great. Like, in terms of like, Freddy's manipulating Jason to get his stuff done, but mm-hmm. to to scare people in this town, right? And then and then yes, but Jason is a unhinged maniac. And so he ends up killing the victim. So Freddy doesn't actually get to kill the victims. And so that pisses Freddy off. And that like, that that's the catalyst for them fighting and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. Right. He, he sets Jason loose and he, what he wants to happen is the murders will happen. And then people will go, Oh, Freddy did it. Freddy's back. The mm. fear comes back. And then Freddy gets more power because he doesn't yeah. have any power without the fear, but then he can't, you can't, you know, uncork or cork the bottle or yeah. you, can't you can't put the cork the Voorhees toothpaste yeah. back in the tube. Yeah. So you, you can't put you the can't Voorhees back Jason in the lake. Voorhees off. Yes. You can't yeah. put Voorhees back in the lake. So <laughs> <laughs> he, so then, yeah, he, Jason runs around doing what Jason does. And Freddie's like, mm-hmm. uh, okay, now I got to f- deal with this. Mm, so, okay. but they do position Jason to be more of the hero of the two. Interesting. Freddie is definitely okay. more of the villain. All right. I'm into it. I'll have to check that out sometime. Yeah, and you've, you're you aware of the Freddy Jason Ash connection that everybody wanted to do. Uh, yeah. Um, in fact, yeah. uh, ah! we do have a <laughs> uh, fan film on here uh, that I've not seen, oh. and I don't think you've seen. But I have not seen this. Let's speculate. Let's rate this, Jay, on a level of like how interested you are to check out this fan film, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yeah, I I mean I'm super interested to check it out because mm-hmm. the this this is a tough sell because okay so you could do Jason Voorhees reasonably well if you have a big guy and you have the right costume mm-hmm. and someone that loves the character and knows how to move and that sort of thing we've seen it yeah you know never hike in the snow mm-hmm. it could be yeah. pr- you know, canon practically um. That Jason is so good. Um, Freddy, you might be able to get away with if somebody's got a really good Robert England impression. Mm-hmm. But that's tough because he requires a lot of good makeup. Yeah. Um, and, and, it, and the script has to be tight if you're going to write Freddy type stuff. Like mm-hmm. good, bad, you know, like good, yeah. bad one liners. Ash, I feel like, is the hardest one of the three. Because Bruce Campbell, these are all iconic guys. And Bruce Campbell, Mm -hmm. it's just Bruce. Yeah. You know? And and I believe, um, I don't know where I heard this, if it was a documentary or something I had read. But I believe Ash is the first character in a horror franchise that makes the viewer know the franchise for the hero and not the villain. Mmm. Oh. That so, sounds about right. I can't think of another thing. Right. So you're trying to do Bruce Campbell. And I am I would imagine if there's a failing, that's where it's going to be. Hmm. Okay. Is, is the Ash character in that dialogue and that delivery. So I'm real interested to see the attempt. All right. Uh, if I have to rate, rate the, am I, I'm rating my, it's only my interest. On, yeah, just on interests. My interest to see how they attempt to pull this off s mm-hmm. i want to uh-huh. i want to yes right. sign me I up so. turn this on I, I thought that might be the case that's how i feel about it too i gotta check it out i just recently realized that was a thing i had no idea all right jay we also have let's not forget the reboot yeah they redid the film franchise in 2009 uh they changed up the storyline in it they really just they really make it a new whole thing Okay. Yeah. What do you think? I did of this see one? this. I saw it shortly after it came out. I don't remember hardly anything about it because <laughs> so that should tell you something. Yeah. Um, well, I can give you the rundown here. In this go film, ahead. in this film, after witnessing his mother being beheaded at a young age, an adult Jason follows in her footsteps and kills anyone who comes to Crystal Lake. Jason subsequently kidnaps a young woman, Whitney Miller, who resembles his mother at a young age. Six weeks after her disappearance, her brother, Clay Miller, comes to look for her. The pair reunite and work together to seemingly kill Jason. No. 
It sounds um, like it's just a to me. I haven't seen it, but it sounds like it's just a movie that they at, they tacked on an origin story they didn't need to because it you could just do everything else that was said except for the origin story and it would just be a Jason movie. Yeah. I, okay. So I'm very likely wrong in this assessment. So feel free in the comments to tear this up, but I remember watching it and I remember my key takeaway is the movie only makes sense if Jason Voorhees is angry because people are growing weed on his land. What? (laughs) Because there's some element of characters growing weed and it doesn't Mm. appear that he's killing people for any reason or any, I just, I remember the logic of the movie just was paper thin. Yeah. So, uh, I also don't like the fact that they had an opportunity to do a Friday the 13th movie and they rebooted it rather than to add on to it. Mm-hmm. F. F. Don't wow. like it. I'm not into it. Bye bye. Reboot. Mm-hmm. Let's pop you over there. Well, Jay, I got a couple other things here. Uh, I need you to rank for me. Jason related. I've got this cool gif. <laughs> Um, I would like you to please rank this cool gif that I found. Uh, I laughed. Um, okay. I'm going to go S. I laughed. All right. It's S-tier. effective. That's great. S tier right there. Um, oh, I also need, would like you to rank the Wikipedia page that I've been using, uh, for, oh no, this is, no, this is the Wikipedia page for just the superstition of Friday the 13th. <laughs> Um, it's a considered okay. a un, it's an unlucky number and you know, it, a Friday can happen at least once, but probably sometimes three times in the same year, there'll be a Friday the 13th. Um, uh, what do you think about this? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's great for the franchise, right? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. The it, number. It, it, yeah. It fuels jokes and memes and discussion of the movies every single year. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go A. All right. I like Perfect. it. Perfect. We'll pop that down into the A tier there. All right. Uh, I also, oh, I'd like you to, to rate the Rebecca Black song Friday, <laughs> um, which you can see here, this beautiful image that someone made of, of, of Rebecca Black and Jason Voorhees. So it does fit the theme. Yeah. Um, but, but you know the song, right? The classic. Uh, yes, I know the song. Friday song. Yeah. How do you, how do you rank that song? I think Rebecca Black got beat up a lot over this song, mm-hmm. and there's worse stuff out there. Not mm-hmm. saying it's a great song, but people were, uh, uh, I feel like they were pretty hard on her. So I'm going to give it a D. A D? That seems like yeah. a fair assessment. All right. So then we have one last thing, Jay, and it's actually me. I'm going to rank this as okay. a treat for you. Okay. It's... Friday the 13th, the video game that came out a handful of years ago, and and we have yet to play together, and I don't think you've had a chance really to jump in and play it properly. I have um, This game is janky as hell. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a mess, but it's real fun. It's real fun to just kind of run around with your friends and try to figure out who's Jason and then get murdered by your friends or try to escape. It's a very fun, poorly... It's not poorly made. It's just like, it's jank. It's, it's, it's <laughs> controls are weird. It's, it adds kind of to the fun of it. So I, I think that makes it fun. Um, hanging out with your friends. Are there better things to do with your friends? Sure. But I'm going to give it a B tier. Uh, I think it's a fun game to play with your friends. Sounds fair. And I, I would like, I would love to play it. Well, we're going to have to do that very soon. Uh, it's spooky season. So we're going to have to, figure that out okay but we gotta stop recording now though this video we've ranked everything possibly related to friday the 13th jay so we gotta i guess we just gotta turn our cameras off and this uh, feels exhaust like an exhaustive list right here this is this is the whole thing mm -hmm. it's all of them including rebecca black's friday which is certainly canon um Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks for joining me, Jay, and helping me uh, understand uh, your thoughts on the Friday the 13th universe. I had a blast doing this, and I look forward to seeing what other people think in the comments. I'm sure Mm -hmm. there's going to be a huge uh, (laughs) comment section and a huge array of what people think uh, should be 
the correct rankings. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out. And again, if you're mad about any of the opinions, uh, please tell Justin Bieber about that and why. Uh, but if in general you just have a differing opinion or some thoughts to throw at us, please leave some comments. Let us know. Yeah. Well, I don't know how to end this, Jay, but uh, we're gonna do more of these. So hopefully, okay. Hopefully this this is fun. I hope. I, I had a I good got, time, but we're not doing more Friday the Thirteenth, right? No, like no, we things. got uh, we got some other tier ideas coming up. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna force all of you guys to share opinions, and I don't have to share any opinions. <laughs> oh well, we should have you do something. Now we got you're doing all this work. We should think of something to have you do. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure. I'd it be out. happy. I'd happy. To be, I'd happily be on the other side of this as well. Okay. Um, all right. We'll figure it out. But Jake, thank you, and uh, viewer. Thank, thank you as well. All right, I'm going to go eat dinner now. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.